As a very wise woman once said, I do not believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. <laughs> and that was Miss Lady Gaga. Oh my God. Herself. And that is how I feel about this film. <laughs> is that it was, she's, what did she say? Like, I'm guilty, but it's not a crime or something. Yeah, something like that. So the true, only thing queen. I regret is not being able to kill him again. It was a murder, not a crime. True. That's what it was. So true. Love. Everyone was- it's giving Gypsy Rose. It's giving Gypsy Rose in Times Square. <laughs> Honestly, everyone is like online is like, we're so over this like Gypsy Rose boom. Never. And like, I kind of like, I kind of like her little updates. I love it. And like, she's like, I saw a Broadway show. I'm like, good for you, girl. You literally like your entire childhood in young adult life was taken from you and then you've been in prison Uh live your life girl i want to know about it it's like that tv show the unbreakable kimmy schmidt yeah where it's like the mole women right who are like in a cult underground Uh and then she like gets free that's i mean not to say that gypsy rose blanchard is a mole woman but she's experiencing her life for the first time how long was she in prison i love to see it a minute a while right because yeah I really want to watch that documentary that's coming out because I think she talks a lot about how it's really good that she went to prison because she had this sort of time to, um, that was her being free, which is crazy. You know what I mean? More free than her life. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. I just Googled, it was, um, almost nine years. Yeah. She was in prison. That's a bit long, honestly. I think I would have given her maybe two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah, you know. (laughs) She could have been in this movie, though. I wanted her in the cell block tango. Oh, my God. It was, like, all of these women who killed their lovers, but then also Gypsy Rose. Like, (laughs) she gets the... so bad. (laughs) She gets that, like, alternate spot. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, please. They can take out, um, what is it? The woman who was not guilty. Um, yeah but then she gets like hung so it is kind of important it is important yeah and it pushes the plot along but i don't know i would have loved to see it reimagining this now i'm sitting there like thinking about the final act and gypsy rose is alongside um uh catherine zeta jones instead yes oh my god their number they would have put together (laughs) <laughs> well did you see i think i've definitely sent this tiktok around to all my friends but there were just two girls that i saw this yesterday like right before i watched the um the movie and um they're doing like the the press conference rag or whatever and like the full dance for it and it's like gypsy and ryan walking into the view this morning or some shit like that No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I thought you were going to say the two girls who are doing the Just Dance Rasputin dance every day until they get snatched. Oh my god. Starting on the first day, like, we're going to do the whole Rasputin dance on TikTok every day until we're both, like, fit as hell. Because that dance is hard. Yup. There's, Mm -hmm. like, a lot of, like, crouching and, like, jumping. Yep. How on earth was We Fit telling me that I was obese when I was playing at least seven different rounds of just dance in a day (laughs) and it would always be like are your clothes heavy (laughs) oh my god it would be like are your clothes heavy and i'd like say yes because it's like you're obese and i'd be like no but my i'm wearing a really heavy jacket right now and then it would like bump you down into like the orange category not the red meanwhile i was like 90 pounds soaking wet like i'm sorry (laughs) we fit gave so many people body dysmorphia horrible it was either your mom or nintendo (laughs) your fighter i want to get one do you ever get those things in the mail that are like if you purchase this product in the past year you may be entitled to like because there's like a lawsuit or whatever and you can like file yeah and they'll send you like probably like 12 bucks or whatever like whatever the Mm. the thing is i've never done it but they should do one of those for like if you like they'll cover a year of better help therapy yeah. nintendo should cover my bill absolutely <laughs> it's the least they could do um but the least i can do is introduce this podcast i didn't do it last week i don't think i forgot um it's the swamp it's our podcast it's an acronym it says for some whack-ass movie podcasting 
And my name is Dara. As always, I am here with my lovely co-host, Emily, who chose the movie this week because you reversaled what I did last week. I picked a winner. You had never seen, so you picked a winner that I had never seen. And this week, we're talking about the 2003 Best Picture winner, Chicago. Which I was shocked that you had never seen this. This is High Camp. It's a musical. It's got a pretty stacked cast. And I mean, you're going through and watching all the Best Picture winners, and this wasn't one of the ones you had seen yet? Yeah, no, I just never got around to it. And honestly, oh. like, it was, like, really a first time ever watch from me. Like, I had never really even, like, caught bits of it on TV. Like, never. But I did feel like I knew a good amount of the songs just because I think it's, like, one of the most famous mm-hmm. musicals of all time. And mostly because of Glee right yes like yes. songs that I didn't even realize were from Chicago they would start and I'd be like oh I know this one like they did this yeah. on Glee. like this was uh-huh. on my little iPod back in the day like little did I know it was even from this musical uh-huh. you're like but, oh Leah Michelle did this with Kate Hudson yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> um the only thing I knew knew is I knew cell block tango was yeah. like I was very familiar with that and I did know the the mama will you're good to mama and she'll be good to you. Or oh whatever. my god! Is that because of um, Jinx uh, Monsoon? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's still on Broadway, but for a good run she's of time, on. she was. Yeah, she played Mama Morton on Broadway, and she at the season fifteen, I want to say, Drag Race finale, they brought her out, and she like did that number for everyone. And it was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had a friend that saw the show and they said uh, she was fantastic. Of course. Like of, yeah. of course she is. Hey. Um, she's probably she's probably like one of my top winners of all time. I think a lot of people would say mm. that though. That's not mm. a hot take by any I love stretch. that gap she's got going on. Oh, just no, her whole thing is, is just excellent. Um I like wish I could exude that kind of like chaotic energy. Uh-huh. Like but like endearing. Like mine is more just like concerning. <laughs> yeah okay uh, but I yeah so those were like the two things I kind of was familiar with but honestly of like even all that jazz the opening number and I would say maybe the most famous song from this whole I knew that song like was a song yeah. but I didn't know it was from Chicago I it could you could have told me it was in any you know famous Broadway musical mm-hmm. I haven't seen that's you know, crazy that you didn't I mean, like, like maybe, maybe in, like, the very periphery of my mind, I maybe would have known that, but I was, you know, it makes sense, it checks out, but I'm, I've never seen it. Yeah. So, since this is your first time watch, can you give me your general thoughts, general impression? Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was a really, um, great take on musical to movie adaptation, um, and I was really interested to see what this director has done otherwise Mm -hmm. and it honestly like kind of surprised me um because he has since then done the mary poppins the like 2018 mary poppins remake which was like not great he did into the woods the into the woods movie musical which i thought was like fine yeah like fair um and then the newest the 2023 little mermaid movie Mm. is what he's done since and all of those to me if it's a pass fail, all fails, right? Yeah. Like, those are not good movies. And so but I was this? I was shocked because he clearly just wrung out all the juice in his body into this movie. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to like get into like I wanted to understand like what where this movie came from really because I didn't get because mm-hmm. I, I was looking into like how does this translate to a uh, stage production because it's so much like theoretical musical numbers that I was yeah. wondering what like how much of this was like mo- the movie taking liberties and I thought it was really interesting that the way he pitched this movie they wanted him Miramax the production studio wanted to do Rent which they ended up doing a couple of years later but they wanted to make Rent into a movie and they wanted him to direct mm-hmm. it and so when he got the meeting and sat down he's like I know we're here to talk about Rent but consider this Chicago yeah. but all the musical numbers are like in her head right so that's how we tell the story but all of the musical numbers are like this fantasy world and they were like oh that's brilliant yeah here's the budget we were gonna give you for rent and you can just do Chicago yeah do whatever you want 
Um, and yeah, I thought that that was just such a cool way to go about doing that of the whole mm-hmm. like fantasy dream sequence Love type. Because then you could be as big and over the top as uh-huh. a Broadway show without making the movie seem like kitschy or hokey, right? Because it's all under the guise of like it being in her delusion, uh-huh. which I lived for. I was like, yeah, oh, that's me. At any given moment, <laughs> if I'm like a little spaced out and somebody like snaps me back into it, I was like, oh, you just cut off a musical number. Like literally, you just like everything is a movie to me. I'm like on the train, and I'm like, this is this is the story that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, it is not. But I will romanticize the fuck out of lame ass shit as to I, the moon. I'm the same way. And the show that really made me more delusional about it was Normal People. I put my Normal People lens on my life, and I'm sitting there. I'm like. It's my show. <laughs> it's like the most mundane thing is happening and you're like, wow, it's like a meditation mm-hmm. on the everyday. Yeah. It's really, it's giving, uh, you know, slice of life, right? Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas it's like big plot points never actually happen. It's all, it's all slice of life. Yeah. It's the <laughs> whole pie is just life. <laughs> but that's like I do my like before, I, I mean, I know everyone does this, but like when I want to fall asleep, but I don't want to look at my phone, I do my like close my eyes and I like slip into my alternate reality where I have like several timelines of different stories going and I can like, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm a shifter. I don't do that shit. No, but I feel like, I feel like it was always easier to keep up with your timelines and like, when you were like in high school or like middle school, cause you just zoned out the entire class and just did that instead. Yep. Yeah. Like it's like I left it's like I've left my Sims to rot for a long time. <laughs> and you come back and like the baby's in the swimming pool and you're like <laughs> exactly. the kitchen is on fire and you're like, well, gotta do some recon here. <laughs> yeah, you're doing the cleanup in your brain. <laughs> oh my god. To like snap back to reality to be like, wait, that's not a real thing that happened. That's <laughs> like, do you ever like think you have a memory? And then you're like, no, that's like I made that up. Like, I'm, I'm fully gaslighting myself into thinking I had these experiences because that's how hard I've meditated in my mind about them. Yeah, probably. But I loved that for Renee Zellweger. Like, every moment we drifted off to, like, the High Camp musical number, I was like, yes, like, well, give it to me. And my favorite thing about that is that it allowed them to still put on these um, numbers like they would on a Broadway stage. Mm-hmm. Like, all of it was... In that stage, there were curtains, you know, in the wings. Like, they didn't really have to maneuver it the way that a lot of movie musicals do. And they have to put it in a different setting and give it, like, context and how you get there. And they were just like, oh, it's delusion. It's on, And, like, it gave it such an easy pass to make it um, just... What's the right way to put it? Just to keep it kind of authentic. To oh, what it's organic. Is. It's way yeah. more organic because to me, like in movie musicals, when people just start singing, yeah, like in a kitchen or a classroom mm-hmm. or a courtroom, it just, there's something a little off about it. Well, and- it's the same thing. Like think of the Hunger Games movie. I was cracking up. In the theater, and this isn't even a musical. Oh my god! When Lucy Gray myself. just starts, when she just starts going, just out of the blue, and she the even had she had some lead up. She was even like, "I'm gonna sing a song now," and then does it. Like even that had a little bit of a prelude when yeah. they do like the talking into singing. I guess this is true for like movie musicals and like actual musicals. But then they're like, "No, wait, stop." don't go like where was that guy like you know we're we're talking we're doing dialogue and now we're singing it's very like so awkward that i'm like oh at what point do you choose to like slip into that because it just does not work you know what movie is like that in the same way and there's two there's two things about it that are very similar it's big busty queen latifah and um the delusion hairspray. oh hairspray yeah hairspray mm-hmm. it is so in the same vein of tracy is fucking delusional mm-hmm. i can hear the bells same vein as renee zellweger just flying into um roxy or whatever yes. roxy. I, yeah 
And, like, and you know that girl who, like, starts doing a, a musical number, like, in mm-hmm. real life. And you're like, no, no, no. Like, somebody needs to tell you to cut this out. We yeah. had, we had like, an acquaintance because Emily and I did band in high school. That's how we know each other. We did a uh, band together. Um, and I feel like all, the, all band kids across all of time and space always just sort of melds together a little yeah. bit because I feel like it's one of those extracurriculars like it's year-round right it's not like a yep. sports season it's like a year-round thing and the kids who do it like that's just really all they do basically yeah uh, mm-hmm. for the most part so you I feel like band, band yeah. kids are always every here. variation of band <laughs> yeah yeah um but so we're always like adjacent to the the choir kids and the theater kids mm-hmm. right because you're like associated but not like very different vibes and we knew mm-hmm. this one girl and <laughs> I don't feel bad telling this story because nobody is going to ever find out who this is. Um, But she in middle school was dating who is now my husband, Henry. And she was dating him and she was like a theater girl, like a theater, like she was like a, I'll sing in the hallways because I'm having my main character moment kind of girl. Mm -hmm. And Henry broke up with her because, you know, they were in seventh grade and um, they'd been dating for like two weeks and Uh Henry breaks up with her and we're in gym class and she collapses to the ground and starts singing on my own from Les Mis. <laughs> and I remember everyone just being like, who is going to tell her that See, she just cannot be doing this right now? I'm so upset because I know we were all in the same gym class because we all had like band and choir at the same time. And I have no recollection of this. It was so funny. It, I know I was there. Like, I'm sure people were like actually playing like dodgeball or something. Like I'm sure there was an actual gym class assignment going on that a certain number of people were actually participating, Uh but just like the sideline kind of slackers like me who like never really Mm -hmm. got into it. Like definitely like I was like, Oh, she's on the ground. She's, (laughs) she's having her main character. She's having her Delulu moment. That's Rachel Berry. (laughs) That's yeah. I'm like Rachel Berry and this girl are like cringe. But for some reason, like, when Renee Zellweger does it in this movie, it's cunt. Like, when oh Tracy Turnblad God. does it, it's cunt. Cunt, yeah. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed it, though. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting to. I don't have a particular strong opinion about movie okay. musicals. I think they do tend to be a little hit or miss from me. I mm-hmm. love musicals. I love going yeah. to see live theater. I think seeing people mm-hmm. sing at that caliber in real life is like so moving and like like just Crazy. such a cool thing to see. Like people who are so talented at that kind of thing. I think seeing it in real life is like such a different and more moving experience than seeing it on like TV or something like that. I don't know how to describe that but I'm definitely like I'll I'll go see a little Broadway show you know once a year during Christmas time with my mom like you know love that I'm I'm actually surprised I didn't know more about this storyline plot wise song wise because I do yeah. you know associate with the Broadway theatery type enjoyment yeah. uh-huh. that's why I was so like yeah shocked that you hadn't seen it and like every almost every song banger oh yeah yeah and that's why I was like oh I know this one too like oh yeah yeah yeah." they you know just threw out media of it being like parodied or covered or whatever I'm like oh I I really know like a lot of these songs Mm -hmm. unbeknownst that they were like from this movie Mm -hmm. um should we give a bit of a recap though um for anyone who hasn't seen Chicago so very high camp to start off um takes place in like the 1920s Chicago Illinois um, Renee Zellweger is Roxy Hart. She's an aspiring um, performer, essentially. And she's, what is it? She's um, having an affair with this man, Fred, um, who sort of was like, hey, kid, I will get you in touch with the people that I know so we can, like, get you an act and start getting you on the stage and get you famous. Um unknown to her fred was just trying to scam some pussy out of her um hit it and quit it and then one day he is kind of sick of it she's been badgering him saying oh when are you gonna set me up with your guy down at the onyx club he said there is no guy idiot shoots him dead yeah she she honestly turned that one out i loved she did not like he got physically aggressive with her and like flew uh-huh. her across the room and she goes into her little panty drawer 
pulls out her revolver and shoots him straight in the chest. Yeah. And I'm like, honestly, yeah, you're right. I, he did deserve that. If a man him. lies to you, if a man lies to you, you should be allowed to shoot him. <laughs> but Hot I'm, pain. as a woman, I'm actually allowed to lie as much as I want. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, it's like a genetic uh, thing. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, girls, <laughs> girls can lie, boys can't. Um, yeah. but I love that actor who plays Fred he is the yeah. main the main detective in the tv show <laughs> The Wire if you've ever yeah. seen The Wire and he, I haven't but... he plays like kind of the sim- a similar like he's like a slimy like morally yeah. ambiguous like detective mm-hmm. who you know like we root for him sometimes but also we know he's kind of a piece of shit and honestly I was yeah. like what is Agent McNulty doing here like <laughs> what I was like I've never seen this man in anything Mm-hmm. other than the wire and just him popping up like this i was like mcnulty yeah no, for what get back to baltimore like <laughs> what there is crime to be fought sir <laughs> there are drug rings to be busted uh-huh. but so essentially fred's dead on the floor um uh Roxy kind of tries to convince her husband to take the fall for it. John, John C. Riley. Riley. Um, he starts to a bit and then he realizes that his wife was um, fucking another man. Um, and he's like, oh my god, how could I be so stupid? Which really sets up his character as sort of this doofus. Mm-hmm. Um, like a bumbling, and- bl- like blundering, just idiot. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so... Roxy goes to jail, sort of realizes that women get a lot of press and celebrity for doing um, heinous crimes and everything like that. So she becomes a bit of a sensation. She meets Velma Kelly while she's in jail, who was another um, star of the stage who had murdered her sister and her husband while she was there. They're kind of fighting for the spotlight in the tabloids a bit. Um, Roxy starts getting more and more press. She is being represented by, oh God, what's his name? Richard um, Gere. Well, well, Richard Gere. Um, that's all. That's all we need to know. But he's like really the slimy. Slim. He's like the slimy lawyer who's like known for like all he does is take on cases that are like women committing crimes of passion. Yeah. And he like gets them free. Like that's uh-huh. his rep. That's his his deal. His law yeah. firm. Like that's uh-huh. their their whole aesthetic um yeah but he's um, obviously like a swarmy kind of gross again mm-hmm. like morally not on the right path kind of no. but like gonna do what he has to do to get the job done and obviously all the women in the prison like want him to represent yeah. because he's like has a you know a perfect track record of yeah uh-huh and no one wants to die a lot of these are like hanging cases uh-huh. um so they're in there. They're kind of both having a, um, what's the word? Mother off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're both trying to out gag the other one. In the Who is going to um, start the department of condology at the school of mothering. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> who is Bob? Can Bob, who's Bob is more. Oh my God. He, each bob keeps getting more and more severe with as the tension rises the bobs are bobbing it's like every scene it cuts back to them the bob is just a little tighter and a little <laughs> um queen latifah's there she's basically the warden of the jail um she is i'll get, actually i'll circle back to this because i have a lot to talk about her. um but essentially it's just both of them trying to not die um, kind of canoodling with Richard Gere, trying to figure out the best way to present themselves to the media, um, kind of both chasing stardom because they're, or at least Velma's very used to the spotlight and loves it. And Roxy, that's the thing that she's wanted um, every day of her life. Um, eventually, they both um, get off. Um, sort of um, Roxy realizes that fame is very fleeting. Um and she goes on with her life. She's trying to make it on the stage a little bit. Velma comes and finds her. They're both kind of down on their luck. She's like, hey, kid, you want to do a double act with me? And she says, no, I hate you. She said, that doesn't matter. Cut to 
the best final number that I have ever seen in just about any production. Second um, to the train station dance number in Slumdog Millionaire. Fair. But fair. <laughs> no, you're, it was you're, so you're right good. About that. They like take out these cunty little like revolver Tommy guns. guns. Yeah. Oh, so good. And like that whole thing was that at one point when Roxy had sort of surpassed Velma in like the media, like stardom attention war that they're having. Velma is like, hey, like I used to do this act with my sister. Maybe we could team mm-hmm. up and Roxy's like, you're a has-been and I'm mm-hmm. not impressed. And it's mm-hmm. basically like as their, you know, their tracks are intersecting and then going in opposite ways. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, it sort of circles back to that, which is mm-hmm. quite nice. And honestly, that's like the only thing that really saved this for me, like storyline wise, because Roxy's character is kind of deplorable, like not likable. Does not do shit. Like, She's constantly just like doing what Richard Gere tells her to, basically. Mm-hmm. And then like, bitching about what Richard Gere tells her to do. Like bitching and also just like being so awful to poor John C. Riley. Like I know, I know that he is so dumb that he kind of deserves a little bit of the <laughs> I was gonna say, I have no sympathy. I for just feel character. so I do feel so bad for him. I really do. And then at the end, she just sort of gets what she wants, right? Like she gets off and she gets free and the only like repercussions that she faces are that she does not end up being as famous as she was even when she was in prison right as mm-hmm. soon as she gets released the whole thing sort of fizzles out and everyone yeah. moves on to the next thing and she thought she was going to be this big star and she's not but i'm like the whole movie i'm not really rooting for her no but i love it i love my little andy hero yeah i'm just like you're you're the worst like like I kind of want you to stay in prison because like you did you actually are get like if she wasn't guilty of the crime then uh-huh. that would be like a different spin on it but no like she totally did it yeah yeah there's no argument here to be made that she's not completely guilty for shooting someone in- oh no yeah um yeah but that's that end scene I was just like oh I don't even care that I don't even like either of them like it's just so it's so cunty Oh my god. It's it's just such a fun song. The music is amazing. The song is phenomenal. The dancing, I the dancing in this show is some of the best dancing I've ever seen in any mm-hmm. show. And I think it's probably the style of it, but it's and I forget that Broadway shows obviously have like really impressive dancing and stuff like that, but like everything that's been in the paper or not paper, but in the spotlight mm-hmm. lately has been like Hamilton or Dear Evan Hansen not shows that you think of for like really spectacular singing and movement and I think the reason is because like this is an older musical I can't remember when it was actually um uh brought to the stage but like the dancing is phenomenal insane like that old like jazz style sort of like um, like burlesque almost right it's so So impressive This is the hottest musical you will ever watch. For sure. Yeah, I couldn't believe... I mean, Cell Block Tango alone deserves, like, a spot on the Pornhub homepage just permanently, right? Yeah, yeah, the dancing in that, like, really got me together and started making me think, like, oh, both Catherine Zeta-Jones and Renee Zellweger here are complete triple threats. They are acting, yes, singing, yes, dancing, yes, all to absolute perfection, no notes, no notes across the board i could not believe it when's the last time somebody has done all three of those things like perfect so well in like a movie or whatever what have you yeah like i forget that acting alone is hard enough you know i could never i could never be on a stage i could never be on a screen i had a hard enough time reading aloud in english class could not be me the fact that Catherine zeta jones is hitting every single move she does in every single number and making it look fucking effortless is insane and both of them singing their asses off so good crazy it's crazy i like know who these women are but i honestly know them both mostly for being actresses in other non-musical i mean 
I mostly know Renee Zellweger because of Judy. And obviously she did sing in that, but that was way more of like her playing a character. And yeah. the singing in that, I mean, while it was very impressive, was not like it was more her acting and embodying as Judy Garland, which was like the really mm-hmm. impressive thing. So I do think of these two women mostly as like actresses first. And in this movie, I was like, I could not pick which I thought they were doing the best at. Like, it was it was all you. so, so impressive. And I and like that they were like, Richard Gere, you do not get a free pass either. You will be tap dancing. They're like, oh no, it. Richard Gere, you are going to sing all your own songs. Uh, yeah. and, he, and you will be tap dancing. He was bad. Terrible singer. Yeah. He was, it was Pierce Bro- he was Pierce Brosnan and Mamma Mia. Yes. Yes. It was giving the Lin-Manuel Miranda kind of nasally, like, you know, like yeah. uh, like uh-huh. person who who is not classically yeah. trained trying Same to do yet. the Broadway thing. Um, yeah. Not that that's, like, I know Lin-Manuel Miranda is like a, you know, classically trained yeah. whatever. But but yeah, it was giving like, I'm a nasally man and I'm doing Broadway. Like it was yeah. not, it was not I, Yeah, he wasn't great. But I did love the way he played it when he wasn't singing and dancing. So I was like, okay, yeah. I'll give it a pass. Um, but the yeah, the thing about Catherine and Renee's performances that really did it for me is that even when they're singing and dancing, and especially in that big last number, um, they which I can't remember the name of the song, um, but you can see that. Renee Zellweger is giving it 110%, but like still really embodying Roxy in that. And Catherine is making it look effortless, like the way that Velma would. She's been doing this all of her life. You know what I mean? But you see them still acting through this insanely difficult routine to do. Mm -hmm. Like you see how much like Roxy wants this. She is giving it her all on this stage. And even like Catherine, you can see these things of like, oh shit, like, we're on this big-ass stage and we're fucking killing it, you know what I mean? And when those, like, little nuances can come through when you're doing this gigantic act is crazy. She, like, I think, I'm so glad that Catherine Zeta-Jones got the Oscar for this. Um, for a lot of reasons, I'm glad that this movie got as many nominations that is it did um, before the Oscars started really taking itself too seriously. Yeah. Um, I, I was just endlessly impressed by both of these women if you're good to mama then mama will ask you a trivia question <laughs> or not trivia no jen doesn't do trivia that's not what this interim podcast segment is it's chocolate or vanilla my mom jen she's here she's gonna say two things we're all gonna say which one we like better that was kind of a fail of little segue i tried to do i liked it then um you've seen chicago on i have i was gonna say so no i saw it in boston at the wang Mm -hmm. um still gregory harrison was in it um who's fairly famous and then um tony braxton's cousin tamar no is there another one there are seven their whole family is a dynasty some relation of tony braxton was roxy wow um, Mm. and it was great and i was gonna do not to get ahead of like themes i was gonna do musicals because i know we all love them Mm -hmm. but i didn't i'll do musicals some other day Mm -hmm. um or maybe it has already happened in the past who's to say (laughs) quite possible if anyone i will pay somebody upwards of 26 dollars to go through and listen and catalog every chocolate or vanilla theme from I'll pay you a dollar per episode. How about that? I'll pay somebody a dollar per episode to go through and tell us what the theme was. You don't have to record what all the questions are, but just what the theme was mm-hmm. for every episode ever. That's I know that's like that is not a fair wage for fair work. That's like 150 bucks. Is, oh yeah, we do have a lot of episodes. Maybe if you and your friends got together, tag teamed it because I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Um, anyways, throwing that out into the universe. Jen, is the, so what is the theme this oh, week? So um, in honor of awards month, these are all animated that were either nominated or won for the Oscar. Okay. I dig it. Yeah. That's into the animated movies. Um, all right. So chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Uh, chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry? Chocolate. I'll say strawberry today. Yeah, me too. Me too, Em. Um, all right. So the first one is from the first year that they awarded it, which mm-hmm. was 2001. Um, Shrek, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, or Monsters, Inc.? I love that Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is an Oscar-nominated film. <laughs> me too. That really tickles me. But 
I have to say Shrek. They created the category because they were like, wow, animated movies are really stepping it up. And Shrek is really the prime example of a way an animated movie can transcend. It's not a kid's movie. You know, it can be so much more than that. Yeah, I do have to agree. It is a cut above the rest. So I'll have to go for Shrek on this one. I too would go with Shrek. This is a Shrek podcast. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. So Shrek for this week. Uh, Next one, Spirited Away. Or Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. Oh my god. <laughs> is that the full title of the movie Spirit? Or is yeah. Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron like a sequel or something? It is the full, the full title? name of the first movie. Wow, that's wild. I did not know that. With Matt Damon voicing the... Oh, we know. Yeah. We know about that <laughs> horse. I know a little too well about that horse. Mm-hmm. That was our uh, vacation CD of choice yes. for many years. Yeah, soundtrack, banger. Yeah. Um, but I've got to go. Spirited Away actually won the same year that Chicago won. Mm-hmm. It's uh, oh, 2003. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, which, great yeah, year. it's just a great year for the Oscars overall. And I think Spirited Away is a really great example, again, of an animated movie that's not like, quote unquote, like kids movie. Yeah. That animation is just... Uh... Guillermo del Toro has a great quote. It's something of like... It's like about stop motion animation specifically that it's like just a medium not a genre yeah right? like like it's a genre like to say that like you know horror that's a genre comedy that's a genre animated movies that right. can be that can be that anything. Can cross genres it can be sure. anything that's not a genre that's yeah. a medium so yeah love that and yeah i think spirited away is that should have won best picture that's easily chicago i'll say it oh easily easily yeah and i totally agree with you on this one spirited away for me so i have never seen spirited away i'm so sorry so (laughs) as you should be i will say um spirit stallion of the (laughs) samurai which i really loved back in the day oh yeah Um, that was that was when we watched that dvd until it did not work anymore i recall yeah well i just think you'd like spirited away a lot jen I'm sure I would. I'm sure I would. I need to put it on my list mm. of things to watch. Because um, we were a Kiki's Delivery Service family growing yeah. up, like hardcore. So definitely if that's like, if you're into that sort of yeah. stylized sort of thing, it's definitely Spirited Away is like a little bit of even better. Yeah, I've seen parts of it. I've just never seen the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, next one, Brave or Cars? I don't know if this is going to be controversial of me to say, but I, right now, if you told me, like, hey, we're going to sit down and watch one of these movies, I would pick Cars. I'd pick Cars over Brave. I didn't really care too much for Brave, and I think I understand, like, what it was trying to do, but maybe I had just aged out of, like, thinking that those movies, like, were too, like, for kids. Mm. And I never really loved Cars, but I think that it's bringing something to the table. Yeah, I still found it very entertaining. I've never seen Brave. I don't feel like I really need to, so I'm going to go for Cars as well. If you had the chance to change your fate, would you? <laughs> or Kachow. <laughs> Kachow. Um, I will also say Cars because, you know, if you're going to do movies where somebody becomes the spirit of a bear, there is only one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brother Bear. So true. Which isn't so on this list, but it was also nominated. Um. Next one, Inside Out or Up? Inside Out, they're doing like a sequel, and yeah. that honestly offends me. Like, just let your movie exist. Not everything needs a sequel. That movie did not need a sequel. Like, I'm sorry. Um, but I remember, I re- remember like sobbing in the theaters at Inside Out. That movie really got to me. And um, I like Up just okay, but I feel like I have had to watch Up in the context of psychology classes, like in high school, way too much for that movie to like not feel like weirdly educational um in that way so it's always like never really enjoyable to me but i really mm. liked inside out i really that that one got me mm. you're like sometimes people seen... are depressed and i was like oh my god that's <laughs> so true what time you you bought a little funko pop of the sadness girl and you're like it looks just like you dara just because she's like wearing a turtleneck and has big glasses and like floppy hair but you were like look it looks just like you i was like we didn't know it was a sadness no you did know you totally didn't you totally didn't you're like look oh my god and i was like yeah that's supposed to be the anthropomorphized embodiment of depression thank you jen (laughs) um you're not wrong though you're not wrong (laughs) I've also, I've never seen either of these movies, but I'm going to go for Inside Out just because I think it would have more of an impact on me. Never saw Up, don't care for it, whatever. Yeah, same. I've never seen Up either, so I will go Inside Out. Um, Next one, Happy Feet or Surf's Up? Oh my god. I know we just did this. I know, I love Happy Feet. Go listen to our Happy Feet episode. I 
like there are a lot of haters. There are a lot of haters about Happy Feet, and if Happy Feet has one fan, then it's me. Surf yeah. is fine too, but as far as like penguin movies from the mid two thousands go, it's Happy Feet. It's Happy Feet. Yeah, totally agree with you on that one. Yeah, it's Happy Feet for the sweep on that one. Uh, next one, Isle of Dogs or Ice Age? I'll pick Ice Age. Um, I went and saw Isle of Dogs. I liked it, but I did really understand and agree with a fair amount of the criticism that surrounded it involving like Wes Anderson deciding that like he can make a movie about Asian cultures that he is not a member of to that extent like like it being present or an influence is one thing but like focusing your entire movie on this thing it's just like felt a little weird to me and his whole like the criticism of like race in his movies I think is fair and I think he's he's getting better and he's growing and he's learning and I think some of the criticisms are a little like too much um but on the whole I definitely don't disagree that that movie definitely had some problematic things about it um and while I did think it was a good movie it's certainly not his best and Ice Age, that little squirrel who's looking for his nut, they could put a little sk- snippet of that between, in front of every single movie I see at the movie theater. If every time I went to the theater to see a movie and there was going to be like a 30 second scrat finding his nut bit before, I would love that. I would <laughs> love to see it. Yeah, I believe that. Um, I, again, I, I've probably seen Ice Age as a kid. Don't remember it. I hated the way the baby looked. Hated it. <laughs> that baby. Alone, I'm picking Isle of Dogs. <laughs> that baby is scary. That baby had a square head. <laughs> <laughs> but I will pick Ice Age also. Who voices the saber toothed tiger? Oh, um, is it um, someone sexy? Is it Dennis Leary? Well, I know John Linguizamo is the sloth, but um. It might be Dennis Leary, same guy. They made that Saber to Tiger have a little too nice of a voice, is all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe not. He just did a little too good of a job, that's all I'm gonna say. Um next one, Finding Nemo or Shark Tale. Ooh, totally different vibes. Um see, I almost feel like the the sequel ification of Finding Nemo like has almost ruined it for me right like I'm like we did not need to be doing all that um but I still think Finding Nemo is more iconic than Shark Tale even though the sexy fish in Shark Tale we need to talk about it like that needs to be a conversation that never stops being had why do they make the Angelina Jolie fish so hot yeah I liked the vibe of Shark Tales a lot better so I think I'm gonna go for that instead of Finding Nemo and isn't there that scene with the shrimp and he's like, my sister had a baby, the baby, and the baby lost its arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's- laughs> that like pops up on my Twitter like once every three years. And I just <laughs> like, who is posting this? I don't know, but I love it. <laughs> um, well, you know me, I'm a, I'm a Disney fan. So I guess I'm going to go with Finding Nemo. Um, next one, Coraline or Corpse Bride? Coraline, Coraline, every day of the week, Coraline. Coraline yeah. over any movie you've said so far. Yeah, Coraline easily. Um, I will say Coraline, obviously, too. Uh, next one, Treasure Planet or Marcel the Shell with Shoes On? Oh, it was so tough. Um, It's tough, like, because I don't know if I entirely agreed that Marcel should have been an animated. Like, I know that it was primarily stop motion, but it also, like, had people in it and was also, like, very much live action. So I think that definitely could have been a debate. Um. I also, I sobbed in the theater at Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. I love me some Treasure Planet. That's one of my nostalgic big touch points, but it's Marcel. That was one of my favorite movies from that year. Was it 2021, 22? Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. I still haven't seen Marcel because (gasps) I'm... Because I know that I'm going to bawl my eyes out because of everything Mm -hmm. you've said about it, Dara. And I, like, need to find the right time for it. You know what I mean? Um... But I'm still going to pick it because I remember watching the first like little short that they did of it like way back in like years, seventh like or eighth a grade decade and a like half that. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I anticipate loving it already. So I'm just going to pick it. I saw it not to flex, not to always do, be doing myself by Southwest flex, but I got to see it at the premiere, like where Jenny Slate 
what's yeah. like for real there. And I had tickets to go to a concert afterwards. So I was like in my little concert getup and I fully cried off all of my makeup. So then afterwards I'm like going to this concert in my cute little outfit, but just like no makeup because I just fully cried like it all off. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this one was super hard for me, but since I'm going to lean towards Disney again and go with Treasure Planet, I love Treasure Planet. And that era of Disney is unmatched. To me, mm -hmm. it is too. Yeah. Uh, next one, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or Lilo and Stitch? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse really changed the game as far yeah, as Yeah, it's animated. one of the best animated films. And it's one of the best Spider-Man films. It's what, it's, it is the best Marvel film that that studio has Easy. ever made. Yeah. Easy. Sure. Yeah, Spider-Verse for me. Yeah, Spider-Verse. Even though I do love Lilo and Stitch. Mm -hmm. um, next one. The Croods or Big Hero 6? I've never seen The Croods. Don't know. It was good. Don't know much about The Croods. Haven't seen either Emma, of these. Emma Stone, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, it was good. Hate but Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> you do? Hate him. Why do, do, do we all hate him? Is he no. a bad guy? He's, he's I just like, find him irritating. He's a yeah. pick me. You think he's a no talent, right? Yeah. We've had this conversation um, before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think he has much to give. I think he's, yeah, a pick me. I think he's annoying um, and just very cringe. And I don't like cringe, so I'll go for Big Hero 6. <laughs> yeah, I love Big Hero 6. That was a good one. Yeah, and I know um, that you have not seen it, and I want to make you see it because you'll love Big Hero 6. Okay. Actually, double feature Big Hero 6 and Marcel the Shell for M. Um, Honestly, like yeah. Okay, yeah. down. On the next snow day. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, last one, and this one's a shout out to Aaron's brother Neil, two of his favorites, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, or How to Train Your Dragon. Ooh, oh, oh, th that's a killer double feature right there. Mm, yeah. um, Neil has good taste. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to say Kubo and the Two Strings because it comes from Leica Studios, which does Coraline and does a lot of really great stop motion stuff, and I am a stop motion bitch. Um. Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess I guess I am gonna have to say that. But How to Train Your Dragon really that is one where the sequels got better and held up as the franchise went Hard on. That, those were movies that like the sequels were deserving and told new and interesting stories, and that like actually really shocked me because kids' movies or animated movies rarely ever like like Finding Dory. F what the fuck is that? Get the fuck out of my face! Get Ellen, Ellen. DeGeneres off of my screen. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Yeah, literally. Um, I'll go Kubo on this one as well. Um, I'll I'll go How to Train Your Dragon. So. I have been wanting to rewatch those lately. I haven't in a couple of years, and I just I always forget how much I really did like those. Hmm. Toothless. I know someone with a cat named Toothless. Oh. I know um, someone with an axolotl named Toothless. A what? what? An axolotl. Oh. What's an axel auto? An axel auto. It's like a, it's like, big, it's like a lizard. Like, oh. Yeah, it's like a big water salamander almost. Right, so c does um, it kind of look like a dragon? Yes, a little bit. Like, yes, very much so. They're actually they're used a lot in research science because they regenerate their limbs. So if you cut its arm off, it'll grow back. Um, yeah. so they're really good to like do testing on. Okay, because you know you can be like, well, we can fuck up its arm because we can just chop it off. So Henry works with them at his job a lot. You know what? I think he has told me that, and I. I guess I just forgot the name of them. Yes. Yeah. Mm. They're very cute. They're cuties. Um, anyways, Jen, thank you. Thank you, guys. For shining a light on a category that is often dismissed as being childish, but yet holds a lot of merit. And I think we try to not watch all of them, but we try to bang out a good handful of the animated yeah. noms as well each year, just because they're usually mm -hmm. pretty accessible. Um, but yeah, love, love that. Love you. And we'll see you next week. All right. I love you guys. Have an awesome night. Bye. Bye, Jen. Bye. Yeah, one of the, the the fun facts I read on IMDb was about um, uh, Velma's Bob, right? And originally, the director wanted Catherine Zeta-Jones to have really long, flowing hair. Um, mm. And she, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones was like, no, 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 I need to have a bob. Because if I'm doing all that dancing, long hair is going to get in my face and people are going to think we're using a body double. I need them to know that it's me dancing. That's Which is so fucking con. It's so, so good. She's like, no, we're, we're doing a bob so you can see my face. So they know it's me dancing up here. And I was like, yes. She also was pregnant for like the second half of filming. So like occasionally they would use a body double like to do shots like from the back or the side when if she uh -huh. was like starting to show a little bit. But she still, you know, did all, all of her own dancing.
that's crazy yeah wild that's so wild to me um there's one person we haven't talked about yet i really want to take a beat and just give her the screen the spotlight that she deserves (sighs) queen latifah in this movie is wild i could not think of a better casting for this role she's everything to me and the director originally wanted kathy bates which is Mm -hmm. So just not even close to the vibe. Like that would have been so wildly different. I want to know a world yeah. in which that had happened. But I'm like, thank God Kathy was busy doing something else and they had to go for Queen Latifah because she is so good. I want her in every, not just movie musical, I want her in every movie ever. Literally. Like, she has never not impressed me. And truly. You know who else really wanted that role? Beyonce. <laughs> oh, for, for Mama. This- for this yeah. movie? How old I, was Beyonce in 2002? No, I swear. Maybe, I, listen, this might be unchecked, but I it was just a piece of, um, I, I had definitely seen it on like Twitter like a couple of years ago or something like that. So could be total bullshit, but I could also see that. This was like the time when, and maybe a little later than, um, what's it called? Um, Dream Girls. I don't know when Dream Girls came out. Yeah, that's interesting because to me, like a, a younger Beyonce could do like the Lucy Liu character, right? Who comes in yeah. and steals the spotlight away, uh, like for the third time, right? This like new pretty, you know. But yeah, I guess Lucy Liu doesn't really do any singing. Yeah, Beyonce, that's crazy to me. Queen Latifah just ate it up, like in a way that was crazy, and especially during her number, her mm-hmm. big fucking number. Oh, I thought you were going to say her big fucking knockers. (laughs) Crazy! (laughs) I was looking at them. I'm not going to lie. They were pressed. They were lifted. They were squished. I thought I was wearing 3D glasses. They almost... (laughs) Which, mind you, the way she acted up this part, calling, um, saying something about Roxy's sweet little puss, dude... Her character feels like she's going to reach through this screen and fuck me. (laughs) (laughs) Like, she plays it up so stud-like. It's insane. Oh, my God. (laughs) And then she's going to reach into my tote bag and snatch a 20. Like... (laughs) Easily. Easily. No, she was She's the most valuable thing in my room. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, I'd let her. Absolutely. Whatever you want, mama. <laughs> On Catherine Zeta-Jones, if she held a knife, I would run into it ten times. Like, if she, you know, yep. she could shoot me two times in the chest and I'd be fine with it. Yeah, whatever. That's to- totally cool with me, dog. But I loved the um, the hair evolution that we see, because it's, like, basically the popularity uh, shift is reflected in how everyone now wants to wear their hair, like Renee Zellweger. Yeah, yeah. And the, like the little wavy blonde, like shorter bob. And at one point, Queen Latifah's character like has a little blonde bob just out of nowhere. And I just thought that that was such a funny little thing to add. And then they had it like grown out, like and like the the dye faded, but she was still trying to like maintain the do. And it was uh-huh. just so funny and so like it's there's so much like that. Like the tiny little like details are so funny. I think that's what gives this movie a lot of, like, soul. There's this one scene where John C. Riley is being interrogated by Richard Gere up on the stand, and it's cutting back and forth between a number that Richard Gere is doing, I think, and... The um, tap dancing. I don't know that it's the tap dancing. It was, I think it was a different thing. Um, but, and it cuts back and forth, and it was just one of the girls from the, um from Richard Gere's number is like behind John C. Riley in one of the shots with her arms <laughs> right over him. Like <laughs> so fucking funny. So stupid. Did not need to be there, but made me giggle my ass off. Yeah. The, so if we want to get into like sort of the Oscars of it all, because that's our um, theme for this month. That's what we're talking about this movie. Yeah. And this movie fucking so wept. The 2003 Oscars. Thank God. So it won Best Picture, um, Supporting Actress for Catherine Zeta-Jones, Art Direction, Costumes, Editing, and Sound. Thank Th- those God are for costumes and sound. Of course, yeah, like that totally makes sense. But to me, I think like sort of the dark horse of the winners is the editing in this movie is so good. It yeah. is so crisp. It is so fast. It almost, to me 
felt like what Baz Luhrmann was trying to do with the Elvis movie. Absolutely. I, I know they're very different and I'm sure they're different directors. They had different visions. It's a different thing. And Baz Luhrmann, I think is way more successful with Moulin Rouge as far as it being like bright, colorful, popping in your face. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, we have a good example from him of what that vision is like executed well, but Elvis mm-hmm. to me felt like it was edited like a movie trailer the entire time, mm-hmm. right? From start to finish, it was like too fast of cuts, too jarring of back and forth. Like it was just weird and it, it felt really jumpy. This movie does that, but like clean, executed well. Yes, it's mm-hmm. fast, it's fast, we're going, we're going, but it's with music, mm-hmm. right? And it's making sense. And random things are coming in, but you can follow it. It's not distracting. I think the best example of that for me is the song, um, what is it? They both reached for the gun. The puppets. Where, with, yeah, where Richard Gere is controlling the media and Roxy and they're all dancing behind him and it's fantastic. And then you get the shot of Richard Gere holding the strings up top and um, and then fucking, oh God, what's her name? Um, oh, from Mamma um, Mia. Yeah. And the Grinch. God, why can't I think of her name, dude? Um, but she's um, in there. She's swinging around on this stage, like <laughs> Christine Baranski. Yes, Christine Baranski. Thank you. Um, but I it was thought like the hot who from the Grinch. It's yeah. like that's my point. <laughs> exactly. But I thought um, that was such a good example of how amazing the editing is, and it because it shifts. From like three different like venues almost, and it's seamless. Like stage settings almost, right? Yeah. It's like it's like they changed the set on the stage, and to me that scene was so fast. But you still all the words of the song you understand, right? Like the mm-hmm. the diction is clear. You understand what they're oh, saying. The yes, message oh, is yes. So yes, they both. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're hammering you over the head, right? With this like really obtuse point that they're making so that's why they can do it so fucking fast right it's like you're beating me to death with a thousand tiny punches and i love it and i love it yeah Uh uh-huh uh but yeah so editing i thought was one that i was like oh yeah this did really impress me actually Mm -hmm. um and then the other things it was nominated for that it did not win were lead actress for renee zellweger she lost to nicole kidman for the hours which i think we talked about a couple weeks ago i've never never seen seen it it. i think the i think Right that Renee didn't win for this. Um, wrong that Nicole did. I think that Selma Hayek should have won this year for Frida. Yeah, for Frida. Yeah, that was also um, like in the mix. A lot of really great movies were in the mix this this mm-hmm. award season that we're yeah. covering. Um, and then John C. Riley for supporting actor, which was like kind of random to me. But I'm like, you know what? Yeah, like it. His number when he does his little clown makeup and he gets out there. So good. I mean, only second place to Mr. Kurt Hummel in the pilot episode of Glee. So I was like, oh, I know this. I'm like, this is episode one of Glee with Kurt like tucking his little bangs behind his ear. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I know this one too. Having a high note that didn't need to be there. (laughs) Which similarly to in this movie, in all that jazz, um, when Roxy goes and pictures herself on the stage and does the big <laughs> jazz, like, um, high note sort of thing, that is the best change that I think anyone has made to a musical number like that. Because it's not in the original um, Broadway re- recording. Like, it's still, like, very, like, calm and mellow. But the way that they insert her into that and do it, like, in that weird way, and it kind of sets up the um the fact that she's going to be inserting herself into all of these different delusional like um, and she thinks she's the main character she's like i would get up there and i would do it i would do it even bigger right yeah um Uh have you seen this like live ever no i want to desperately we should go but no i haven't absolutely but yeah i thought that that's just one thing that i usually it, it depends sometimes i'll listen to like um the original Broadway recording of stuff. Sometimes I'll listen to um, the movie version if I like it better. Like I do that with Hairspray a lot. I always mm-hmm. listen to the Hairspray one. Or I always listen to the Mamma Mia um, movie um, soundtrack. A lot of the times I'll listen to the Chicago um, original Broadway recording. But for that song, always, 
always the movie version because something about that high note just scratches my fucking brain dude mm. that's when I, that's when this movie got me is yep. like that whole number was so good and now at that point i was like oh so we're also doing like really interesting and intricate storytelling as well yes. it's not just that you're gonna blow me away by like great choreography it's that it's gonna be like like that right like snappy like and yep. that's when you start to get it like you're like oh yep. this is we're gonna do like the delusional self-insert sort of vibe yeah which i the, the <laughs> whole premise of that ex- in it the way it was executed was great mm-hmm. um but also so supporting actress queen latifah she did not win uh director adapted screenplay cinematography and original song all nominated mm-hmm. did not win but basically that's like every category mm-hmm. other than you yeah. know the ones it's like uneligible for like you know yeah documentary or whatever but i'm like damn they really like they used to be into movies like this the oscars used to not be like this stuffy iffy like we want to do things that are really serious when it's like no sometimes the best movie of the year is a musical yep the last the only other thing that i could compare this to in the last 10 years is everything everywhere all at once yes getting the flowers it deserved yeah absolutely And it's crazy because I wouldn't even call these two movies remotely similar. I would just think that they are not that serious. I mean, it's, I think I think everything everywhere has very like in a very um, sort of profound um, messaging and undertones and themes and everything like that. But, but like, it's, it's silly. Like, like they hit each other with dildos. Like it's a silly exactly. movie. Exactly. Yeah. But, like, in the last 10 years, I couldn't think of another movie that's sort of in the same vein as, like, Chicago. And it's wild to me. Or winning. Yeah, and I guess maybe that has something to do with, like, movie musicals now being, like, just a little different. Like, not really the same energy as this one, I guess. Yeah, well, was was West Side Story nominated? It probably was, right? It was. Yes, it was. Um, I didn't like it. It's not funny. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) This movie was funny. Um, I don't want to so, shake my ass, and I'm certainly not <laughs> horny after it the way that this movie was. This is the kind of movie that has you, like, at 15, like, Googling lesbian porn for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> or it's, like, cell block tango scene at, like, half speed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, uh-huh. movies, the movies that this was up against that year were um, The Gangs of New York, yeah, The Hours, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which is the second installment of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and The Pianist. Honestly, it's just impressive that Lord of the Rings was also nominated, because Lord of the Rings, nowadays- The third one won. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, the third installment, won Best Picture. Yeah. You see, like, that's- Nowadays, they would never do something like a fantasy- uh, The third installment of a fantasy franchise- Never. That's insane. Yeah. Which, no, I mean, yeah. the way that a lot of, like, sci-fi fantasy franchise movie stuff is now, I don't, like, I don't think we well, should be putting... Well, it's tubes, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we should be putting Marvel stuff in. Not that, not that I'm saying Lord of the Rings is the same as Marvel. Like, that is not true at all, but... Yeah, I was gonna say that, that's nearly offensive. Um, but not that I'm saying we should just be putting, like, stuff just because it's popular or did good at the box office. Like, that is not what I'm saying, but I do think uh-huh. that they need to broaden their horizons a little bit. As far as like, not every bio, not every historical drama or biopic is inherently good. Just because it's telling the life story of someone you thought is important doesn't mean it's a good movie. Like, actually, most of the time, it's not. I didn't have to see the Whitney Houston bio or biopic to know it was bad. Right? Or just like everything feeling so Oscar baity now of like movies trying to conform to this mold of like, it has to be this like, profound and serious and for some reason the movie that comes most to mind for me is king richard of like recent past of king richard the movie about venus and serena's williams's dad and it was basically all this huge ploy to get will smith an oscar and it was like i'm like okay let's take a look here i understand that this guy has maybe a sort of interesting life in the grand scheme of things why is this movie not about one of those girls why is it not focused on from childhood to adulthood, the life of Serena and Venus Williams. Yeah. That is just, like, so much more interesting and compelling of a story. Like, to be like, oh, no, we're going to make a movie about the dad so that Will Smith can really, like, have emotional moments and get his Oscar. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. That Mm -hmm. movie pissed me off to no end. And maybe it's just because I really did not like it. 
Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that, and it's kind of the same way. I think that Bradley Cooper has tried to set himself up to win for uh, Maestro, Maestro this year. Mm-hmm. Same fucking thing. I could not care less. Um, and there's this very particular scene that you know he threw in there, like as his like clip. To try is it and get the directing uh, when he's doing the conducting? In the cathedral, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one. Which, was, did you see Tar? I love the, the tweet that's like, Kate Blanchett watched one YouTube video of how to conduct and showed up on the set of Tar and did that shit. Like, yeah. Bradley Cooper being like, I spent 10 years, like, learn. No, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, suck my dick. But I'm really hoping that, um, um, God, why can I never remember her name? Um, from past li- the director of past lives wins. Is that what you're gonna say? No, 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 no. Um, uh, she plays his wife in. Oh, Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan. I knew it was. Yeah, I'm really hoping that Carrie Mulligan just steers steals all of his thunder because she acted circles around him and did not have to do nearly all that much. Yeah. That's what I, I haven't seen the film yet, but that's what I've seen from clips on Twitter of like, he seems like he's really overdoing it. And I'm like, Bradley, maybe you can pick one. You can be either behind the camera or in front of it. You do not have to be doing both. If Bradley Cooper just had a mic drop moment, like in this movie, which was the original, if it weren't for the baby, then maybe you'd win best director. Oh my God. The way she PETA malarked all their asses. Literally. No, it was... <laughs> If it weren't for the baby. Oh my god. No, he watched Chicago and he was like, hold on here. In Pan Am. <laughs> on Pan Am TV. On his little DVR in District 12. <laughs> Peter Malark, cinephile. <laughs> Peter Malark, theater kid. <laughs> um, um, but do we want to get into our regularly scheduled programming? Absolutely. So um, I feel like who's our third for Fuck, Mary Kill? It's gotta be Roxy, Velma, and then do we want to do, like, Mama Morton, or do we want to yes, do, do Mama, Richard Gear? Okay. Let's do Mama, because that makes it more difficult. Yeah. Because I would probably Gere, just... We're, we're gonna kill Richard Gear. like, yeah, I unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. I am gonna marry Mama. Duh. Obviously. Think, yeah, just... I think I, her delusions are one I can actually get behind, I think. Yeah, and, and it's I, tangible, I, and she can make it happen a little yes, bit. Yes, I want mm-hmm. that energy. And she's a she's, hustler, and she's grinding out there every day. And honestly, I like that we didn't see, there was never a twist of, like, that she was, like, secretly, like, being abusive or, like, shitty. Like, no, she just, like, took their money and, like, she's hustled and grinded. Yeah, but, like, helped them, like, actually did the things she said she was going to do, which I kind of did like. Exactly. Mama seems like the kind of girl who wears the strap to work. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say something about it, she'll hit you across the face with it. <laughs> if you say something about it, she's going to fuck you. <laughs> and I will be enjoying it. She's going to um, give you three orgasms that you didn't want. <laughs> uh, and honestly, though, like both both Renee Zellweger and Catherine Zeta Jones are so hot in this. No one has ever been hotter in this. Like, Catherine Zeta Jones oh, takes the cake for me. She. Easily. She just Easily. is just a not tire, so I'm gonna fuck her and I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna put fucking Roxy out of her misery. I think you two's delusions would go too hard together. Yeah, yeah. I think it's both like, just be spacing out in a room, like yeah. in a sensory deprivation tank <laughs> for the rest of forever. You guys, would, <laughs> you two would create like a rift in the reality of space and time. <laughs> <laughs> It would be too too much. Um, I am going to agree with you wholeheartedly on mm-hmm. these decisions. Mama is going to provide for you. <laughs> after you. Like, if I, I'm good to Mama, Mama will Mama's be good, good to me. <laughs> listen, I'm going to be nothing but a saint to Miss Queen Latifah. <laughs> All right? Um, and yet, it, if you, like, I can't even begin to talk about Catherine Zeta-Jones in this. Like, if you haven't seen this movie, or if you haven't seen um, the opening number or Cell Block Tango, go watch it. You'll understand everything. Alright? 
<laughs> that tore my hole in the space time continuum rift is. <laughs> Um, girls don't want porn. Girls want cell block Chicago. tango. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're gonna host a little dinny party, a little Chicago themed night with the girls, what are you going to provide as a little accoutrement? So I want this to be cunt. Of course. A little high class, you know, a, just really feeling very luxurious the way that I want to be once me and um, Velma have finished our number on stage. We're going out for drinks. We're getting cocktails. Um, we're going to get a little quick little appetizer. Nothing crazy. Um, so I think that for food, you do something a little fancy. You get a nice piece of um, beef and then you make like a beef carpaccio. Um, which is like really thinly sliced beef with like an aioli and some arugula and like a couple of little like toppings on it. Um, a little fancy, not too heavy. I don't really want to eat to this movie. We're going to um, do a dance number after. So I need to be not feeling too full. Exactly. Exactly. Um, alternatively, you could have a cigarette for dinner. <laughs> uh, but with that, um, this movie gives like a whiskier gin vibe, like it's prohibition. Yeah, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and I think you make a New York sour, which is basically the same as a whiskey sour, but you float a little red wine on top. Um, yeah, it's really slay. I tried to make one last night, not good. <laughs> Well, or like I, I couldn't, I couldn't float the wine. You have to be kind of a good bartender to do it. And also, I had like non-alcoholic um, whiskey. Oh, so it was like the densities were probably like not. Well, it just correct. tasted like liquid smoke. So yeah, that's icky. <laughs> I just don't understand drinks like that. I'm like, I always just want to stir it because I'm like, I don't want to take a sip of just whatever the, you know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah. It's like yeah. um like at Starbucks, those drinks that are like ombre. And I'm like, I don't want to just sip milk. Like yep. I don't want a fat sip of just straight milk when I dive into my coffee. Like stir my coffee. I don't yep. want to do it myself. Yeah, um, I get it. That's how I would you, feel about that. Do you also, hate, like, do, how do you feel about an egg white on a drink? Or like egg oh, whites? Fine. I would never do it for myself at home, but if I'm out somewhere and I order something that has egg white in it, like egg white being a component in a drink that otherwise sounds intriguing to me does not deter me from ordering it. Now, yeah. I always just feel like it always is just like a little um like foamy on top, right? It's like a little yeah, foamy. Exactly. You foamy. Yeah. But it's never it's nice. I don't know. I've never been like off put by it, but I wouldn't like <laughs> in my own home rock an egg white. Like <laughs> couldn't be me. Um, I, I, this is like so stupid. Cause originally I was like Chicago deep dish pizza. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you cannot be eating like pizza with this. It's just, it's not right. Um, no. so for my drink, really basic. What is the, the moment in this movie? It's the cell block tango, tango, mango. You Ooh. do a mango rum drink. It's a little fruity. It's a little cunty it feels a little classy because i feel like any juice that isn't like orange apple or cranberry like feels like classier to me i don't know oh. so you get like they have these um specifically at trader joe's they're like little carbonated mango juices and they come in like yep. a pack of four uh and they're so good just like with you can honestly just put a little splash of whatever your liquor of choice but i do think a nice like dark rum goes mm -hmm. really well yeah this movie is not tropical but i'm taking it there you know your yeah. cell block mango tango and Love. then you're going to eat derived from the moment where she has her little chocolate bonbons and she's like trying to win over Roxy by mm -hmm. like offering her these chocolates. And then they have like a nice little facetious back and forth to me. I don't really want like chocolates or truffles or bonbons, but again, not to like name drop a grocery store, but Whole Foods has like little macarons and you can build your own little like oh, set of six and you can I get like six that. different ones but yeah. also if you like have a bakery near you or whatever that like makes good macarons that's always something that just feels like kind of fancy and decadent and like a special treat that I don't Love. get all the time but when I do get it I'm like oh like I need to really savor it and like only eat one and like yeah it's like two dollars per cookie that's why yeah yeah right and that's why I'm like I really need to but like they're always such fun like little flavors like coffee latte macaron like ooh, yes uh -huh. 
Um, so that's, I think you get a little plate of like macarons and you all have your little sneaky snacky, you know, and you don't eat too many because you don't need, they're very like decadent. <laughs> um, Love. That's a good one. And then I, this is so lame. I just say you have to watch Hairspray after this. Fair. Like I, um, the only other movie, I've never seen this, but I feel like um burlesque with Cher and Christina Aguilera. I've never seen it, but it gives me the vibe that it would go well after this. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll have to watch it for myself to like recon that fact. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, it's hairspray to me. I'm like, I want more Queen Latifah and I want another good mu- movie musical. Yeah. Yeah, truly. I want the glitz and the glamour, mm-hmm. um, which I feel like sometimes you can only get in this specific time period. And I want another good dance number and good music. What is that going to be? Newer movie, Babylon. Oh, that's another one. I haven't seen it, but you continuously hype it up. So I, I will have to. Because everyone... Seen it spectacular, that's spectacular, but I liked it. A lot of people really credited that as their big award snub of, was it last year or the year before? Because um, it I didn't even... It, it didn't get nominated for anything, I don't think. And it really should have for like anything. for like cinematography or song or like at least something, you know? Yeah, or just give Margot Robbie like a specific award for that opening dance number. For sure. That's yeah. another thing about the Oscars. I'm like, we don't have to dogpile all of the awards on the same six movies. You actually can pick very different things for all the different categories, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, all the performances don't have to be from the ones you picked for Best Picture. A good exactly. movie and a good performance are two wildly different, like, criteria. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, we're getting into award season. The Golden Globes, as we record this, are tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so we might, I'm I'm feeling like this will be in the past when you all hear this, but we're hopefully going to be, like, posting a little bit more about, like, just upcoming award season as things happen, um, trying to stay on top of it. It's my favorite time of the year. It's the yeah. most wonderful time of the year, award mm-hmm. season. And hopefully we can do some sort of, like, live stream or bonus episode or something for the actual award ceremony. Um, that would be really cute. And let us know your opinions. Like, I really want to know what you think. Mm-hmm what's going to get nominated, what you hope gets nominated, um, all of it. The nominations drop on the 23rd, I believe, mm-hmm. which I'm real excited for. Yeah. Um, and as always, thank you all for listening. If you could give us a review, that would be stunning. Some little stars, if you could drop us some stars on whatever mm-hmm. listening platform you are listening to. We also do bonus content. I'm sure this month's will be award season related in some capacity. Um, but we have a lot of fun stuff going over on the Patreon. Sometimes we just do like chit chats where we talk about what new movies we've seen in theaters recently. Sometimes we'll cover a movie that is suggested to us. We do all sorts of different bonus stuff about once a month over on there. And it's like $2.86, I think. I priced it the same as a great value ice cream sandwich because I felt mm-hmm. like to me that seemed about right yeah. for what you're getting. Yeah. So if that interests you, hey, use some of that money you got from your great aunt at Christmas and you should support me and my podcast um, (laughs) by joining the Patreon. And yeah, all the links to all our shit is in the description below. We love you all. Thank you for listening and goodbye and good night.